Hey there, my name is Rocco and I do Daz 3D videos on my channel here on YouTube to help you to get the most out of your Daz 3D renders. Uh, and I'm glad you took the time to check me out and I hope that uh, you see enough to convince you to hang around a little bit longer. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video here, but uh, a bit of real life stuff has got in the way somewhat and hopefully now most of that's out the way and I can get back to doing these Daz 3D tutorials for you. Today I'm going to show you something that a few people have asked me about of late uh, when I've been putting images up in various places uh, and that's to do with this hazy, is that the right description, this hazy type of appearance that you can get on some of the images that, that I've created of late. Uh, if I flip between the hazy and the non-hazy on screen you can, you can see what I mean. It adds a little bit of glam, a little bit of realism somewhat to the images. Uh, as long as you don't overdo it, because if you overdo it, it can wash things out a bit too much. Uh, it's not post-process, it's not done in Photoshop or anything of the sort. It's all done within Daz with the Bloom features uh, that you can find on the Render tab, which we're going to have a look at now, and I'm going to show you how to do something like this in your own images. Okay, if we were to look at the raw scene file that we get, obviously we've got our model, we've got this little small alleyway. But one thing I just want to mention before we, we get into the sliders and such is this area at the end here where it's open. There's no, there's no environment there. There's nothing there at all. For Bloom to work, you need a light source within your image that is projecting light towards the camera. In this case, light from the HDRI that I'll be using will be coming through that gap at the end of the alleyway and shining into the camera from behind the model. It could be, you know, you could have a window with light streaming through the window. You could have an open doorway. Uh, you could have a, an emissive bulb, light bulb, or an emissive candle or a flame. You could even have a bright reflective surface from a light off camera shining on something that's bright and reflective. But you need some light projecting into the camera for Bloom to be able to work. Now, if we flip across to the NVIDIA iRay preview, you can see what I mean about this alleyway at the back where it's, it's shining light through that gap in towards the camera. We need that for Bloom to work. Uh, but Bloom isn't engaged at the moment. It's just the normal raw image that you would get if you just hit render, uh, which is perfectly fine in itself. Obviously, it, it depends if you want to add this little extra bit into it. But to add that little bit, we need to engage Bloom. And to do that, we come across to the render settings tab that we've got. Uh, and we come down to the filtering section, which you can see just here, it's grayed out on mine for some reason. Uh, click on that filtering. Uh, and then we come into this little menu option or the little option screen that we've got. And we can see here, Bloom Filter Enable, which is currently set to off. If we click that onto on, we see these three new sliders appear. Boom Filter Radius, Bloom Filter Threshold and Bloom Filter Brightness Scale. And once the iRay catches up, uh, we'll see it apply those default settings to our image. Now it looks a bit weird that it looks a bit crazy because these numbers are, are not very good for default. But as you can see, uh, you can just start to see the, the light from this alleyway starting to bleed in the image in some areas. And also you see some other bits. I mean, the white areas are always going to reflect light somewhat. Uh, doesn't look that great at the moment, but all we need to do is just play around with these three sliders to, to get the result that we want. And in truth, I've never used Bloom for brightness scale, so it's only really two sliders that you need to get to grips with. Bloom filter radius is the thing that defines how much of the light bleeds into the image, how, outside of the area, how much of that halo is spread amongst, uh, uh, you know, within the image. Uh, it starts off at a value of 0.05, as you can see over there. I always just put that up to a one. I don't mess about. I just go straight into a one and I put that into a one. Play around with other settings if you want, but I just always put it at a one. And you'll see why when iRay catches up and it reapplies that new radius. So as you can see, the, the light is now washed right the way through the entirety of the image that we've got. Made it quite very, very foggy, it looks like. That's probably a good way to, to describe it. Very foggy. And it's just the light washing right the way throughout the camera and obscuring our image also. Not a great look, but we can fix that with the next threshold, uh, with the next slider, which is boom, filter, threshold. What this slider does, it affects just how translucent that uh, that haze is, how, di how diffuse it is, how much you can see through it. Uh, the default setting is down at 2000, which is fairly low. If we were to go lower than that, 
what it will do it will make that haze and that fog a lot thicker so if we just go down to say a thousand on that you can see now that it's really washing out the image so it's not good so the lower the number on that threshold the thicker less translucent you make the haze that comes out of the bloom uh, so what you want to do well what i do it all the time but you maybe want to do the same is you go the other way now if the default was 2000 i just go straight away 10 times that amount so i'll go straight up to a 20,000 value as you can see there now as you can see at 20,000 it's starting to thin out the haze it's starting to thin, thin out the fog a little bit and we're starting to get the final look that we want to actually get now in this particular image I actually went up another notch I went up to 40,000 I think on this image for the bloom filter threshold but 20,000 is fine if that's okay but as you can see now this haze this bloom effect is now creating this really good this nice foggy hazy glamorous effect onto the image just to, to add a little bit to it a little bit good the final uh, slider in this uh in this section is the bloom filter brightness scale which does exactly what it says on the tin it brightens up the haze or it or it makes it a lot dimmer i've never used this uh, but you know I, i've just never had the need to use it uh, but if you were to go higher for instance let's go up to five to really you know i'll tell you what i'll go up to 10 just so to, to really show a difference if i go to 10 with that you can see how really bright now the light is coming through into the scene way too bright for what i want i mean even five probably would have been a bit too bright if i'd left it at five uh if i just knock that down to five and take a look there we go with a value of five and even that's way too bright as i said i've never met i've never used the brightness scale but that's what it does if you want to play around with it obviously go below one you'll make the image really really dim also or the, or the haze really dim and that's all there is to bloom and you can add little hazes and little fog effects if you want to describe it as a fog effect just like that just by using those three little sliders that are available within daz uh, now there is no real best usage to do with this there's, there's a lot of little variables that are at play here so if you want to try and get the best result it depends on you know the size of your opening that we've got here in this case the alley it depends on the brightness of the light that's coming through it depends on these three sliders that you're playing around with it even depends on whether or not your model or something in the scene is uh you know in front of the light source somewhat so it affects the way the light comes in there's a whole lot of load of little variables that you've just got to experiment with either with those sliders or within the scene itself and the scene elements within itself to get the best result that you want from it uh, so i can't really say do this do that because it will be exactly unique for every different scene that, that you do it will be you know you'll have to play around with different things to get the effect that you want but that mean the basics of it that's how you use bloom uh you know and like i said it just adds this little bit of I, I think it just adds a little bit of realism to the images and you know a little bit of glam to it you know uh but that's how you do it that's bloom that's how i, I create these images that i do uh i hope you like this video uh, i hope you got something out of it if you've got any questions or you'd like any help about bloom or about anything with daz related itself drop them in the comments down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can in the meantime though give this video a like give it a thumbs up share it around and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my channel because that helps me big time so thanks for that thanks for taking you know getting away all the way through to the end and i'll see you next time bye bye now